Hello aspirants, welcome to the online platform of GIS. Today we are going to discuss the Indian Polity section. In in the Indian Polity today we are going to cover the Union Executive. We know that India is a parliamentary democracy, and Indian Constitution gave us the concept of the separation of power. And when we talk about the governance in India, in Indian governance we have three important pillars. First pillar is the legislature. Legislature means the law making part. The second pillar is the executive part. The laws which are made by the legislature are going to be implemented by the executive. And the third is the judiciary. Judiciary is the part which is responsible for the adjudication in case of any conflict. Okay, sir. So these three are the pillars of the governance. And between all these three pillars, among these three pillars, the legislature, executive, and judiciary, there is a concept called separation of power. Separation of power means all three organs do work separately and they do not overlap in their functioning and do, do not interfere in the functioning of the each other that is called the separation of power we are very much aware about it so today we are going to discuss about the union executive and we know that <clears throat> we have the federal structure it means we have more than one center of power it means the all the three organs of the governance work both at the central as well as the state level at the central level, we know that the legislature is taking its part, legislature is doing its part in terms of parliament. So, parliament is responsible for the law making at the central level. Similarly, we have the same functioning of the legislature at the state level also. So, at the state level, the state assemblies or the state legislature is responsible to make the law for that particular state. So, we know that the activities of the governance are taking place at more than one level. We have the more than one center of power and that is the main tenant of the federalism. So, India is a federal country, sir, no doubt about it. So, when we talk about the union executive, it means we are taking the second aspect of the governance into consideration that is the execution and that execution at the central level. So, the same execution is also taking place at the state level, sir. Today, we are going to discuss about the union executive means the executive activity at the central level, sir. Okay. So, let us discuss about the union executive so union executive means uh, that the execution of the laws made by the parliament at the central level and the union executive is made up of five pillars five pillars and these five pillars are the first pillar is your president of india sir the president of india is the executive head of the country sir then comes the vice president of India, the prime minister of India, the central council of minister and the attorney general of India. We will discuss about all these five pillars one by one. The president of India, we are not going to discuss in this lecture. We will discuss about it in the, uh, another separate lecture. So today we are going to start with the union executive and the vice president of India. Okay, sir. So let us start. the vice president of india the vice president of india is a person who is going to head your rajya sabha sir going to head your rajya sabha or the act as a chairman of the rajya sabha now this concept has been taken by the united states so we can read that the vice president occupies the second highest office in the country now there is a official warrant of precedence official warrant of precedence now what is the official warrant of precedence it is nothing but the constitutional hierarchy sir the constitutional hierarchy means who is the first citizen of the country the first citizen of country will get the highest in the hierarchy means he will be at the number 1 sir so the president of india is the first citizen of the country and first uh, at the first rank in the official warrant of the precedence now, person at the number two is the vice president of India, sir. Okay. And at the number three, we know there is a prime minister, sir. And, and so on. This official warrant of precedence, you can read on your own. You can search on the Google. You will get the list. Okay, sir. So, we can say that in the official warrant of president, at the number one, we have the president of India. Number two, we have the vice president, sir. Okay. It means vice presidential position is a very prestigious position in the constitutional hierarchy or in the Indian context. 
so the vice president occupies the second highest office first thing which you must keep this in mind because sometimes in the prelims examination they do ask this kind of things <clears throat> so the second highest office is the vice president of india he is accorded a rank next to the president the president is at the top rank in the official warrant of presidents and the vice president at the number 2 the office is model on the lines of the american vice president this you must keep in mind okay sir so in very beginning i said that vice president of the country is going to be the chairman of the rajya sabha sir chairman of the rajya sabha now chairman of rajya sabha means we know that union legislature union legislature in union legislature we have the three important parts sir three important pillars the president of india is there the rajya sabha and the lok sabha sir so here we have the lok sabha and the rajya sabha these are the two houses lok sabha is a house of uh, popular house we can say it is a popular house and when we talk about the rajya sabha rajya sabha is a assembly or the council of states sir so in rajya sabha we have the representative from the respective states sir it's a federal chamber kind of okay so rajya sabha in which there are members which are coming from the different states this particular assembly will be headed by the vice president of the india so vice president of india is a ex officio chairperson of the rajya sabha sir this we must keep in mind and this is working on the same lines with the american vice presidential officer because in american even in america we talk when we talk about the the legislature of the america that is called as the congress that is called as the congress so american legislature is called as the congress it also have the two houses sir it also have the two houses the first house is considered as the house of representatives house of representatives and second is called as the senate second is called as the senate sir and senate is the upper house and it is the lower house sir and senate is the house which is represented by the state sir and this is the house of representative is represented by the people from all over the united states so the senate which is the upper house is ultimately uh, uh, is a house which is represented by all the states and each and every state have the equal representation sir equal representation which is not followed in india because indian concept of the rajya sabha is can be you know uh, compared with the senate of the united states of america but there is a difference of the representation because in the senate there is a equal representation of each and every state means from all the states from all the 50 states two representative from each states are coming that's why the membership is the 100 and that is fixed sir but in india each and every state have the representation in the rajya sabha but that is in proportion of their population sir so in india we can say that the uttar pradesh which have the highest population will have the more representation than the rajasthan which have relatively less population than the uttar pradesh sir and some states which are you know having the very less population have the very less representation in the rajya sabha so in india we have the concept of rajya sabha but it follows the the um, the doctrine of the proportionality means the the on the basis of their population they will have the representation in the rajya sabha but when it comes to the senate that is the uh, upper house of the uh, congress congress that is the legislature of the united states in the senate each and every state will have the equal representation so there is a difference between the senate and the rajya sabha but the concept of the vice presidents will become the chairperson or the vice president of the country is a by default or the ex officio chairperson of the upper house is the concept which is almost same sir okay so the concept that the vice president is the ex officio chairperson of the uh, the, the rajya sabha or the upper house is taken or the insp inspired from the american vice presidential officer this this is what we must um, keep in mind that's it sir now comes what are the qualification to become the vice president of india here we can see uh, honorable jagdeep dhankar who is the current uh, uh, vice president of the india now what are the qualification qualifications are very simple sir these are the factual aspects <clears throat> so the first aspect is he should be the citizen of india no doubt about it it's as simple as that that one must be citizen of india in order to become the vice president of india because vice president is the second highest office then we cannot allow an alien or the non citizen to become the vice president okay so the first thing is the the person should be the citizen of 
India sir. The second thing is he should have completed the age of 35 year. Now the age of 35 years sir, the age related criteria is there. He should be qualified for election as a member of the Rajya Sabha. Now this is very important sir. Because the vice president is going to be the chairman of the Rajya Sabha. That's why somebody who is going to be, who is going to chair the Rajya Sabha must be eligible to become the member of the Rajya Sabha. That's why the qualification part of the vice president says that somebody should be qualified to, for election as a member of the Rajya Sabha. So all the criteria which we, we, we are going to discuss in the eligibility of the Rajya Sabha are also applicable to the vice presidential candidate. Okay, sir, this is what you must keep in mind. The Rajya Sabha is there. Okay, sir. Now here comes, he should not hold any office of Profit, sir. Now, here is a term called office of profit. Means somebody who want to become the vice president of India should not hold any office of profit. Now, what is the office of profit, sir? Now, office of profit is something which is mentioned in Indian constitution. Along with that, it is also mentioned in the representation of people act. Now, office of profit term is mentioned both in, both in the constitution and the representation of people act. But the office of profit do not have a single clarified definition sir there is no single clarified definition the clear definition there is a sense of anomaly or we can say there is an ambiguity sir and when there is an ambiguity we always you know uh, go to the for the interpretation to the supreme court or the judiciary of the country sir and because there is no clarity on the office of profit the judiciary or the supreme court time to time interpreted so many things regarding the office of profit sir okay so in 2001 there was a case in the supreme court okay in that case supreme court given some of the criteria to check the office of profit and why office of profit is important and this concept is related with the member of parliaments member of legislative assemblies and the important officers like president vice president and some other officers so mostly this concept is affiliated or related with the member of parliament, MLA's president, vice president. So this criteria of the qualification is saying that he should not hold any office of profit, sir. Now the meaning of office of profit is, okay, whatever we know about office of profit, there is no clarity, but there are some aspects which are written, sir. Office of profit means a post which is remunerative. Remunerative means you are receiving amount some amount from the state or the central exchequer sir you are receiving some money now why this particular thing is important sir why somebody should not hold office of profit and what are the office of profit so somebody who is receiving some remuneration for example if you are a government servant sir if you are a government servant it means you are receiving a salary sir if you are receiving a salary, it means you are on the office of profit. So if you want to become the vice president of India, you must leave that office of profit. Otherwise, you cannot become the vice president of India. Okay, sir. First thing. Second thing is the government service means you are getting the remuneration from the uh, from the government, sir. Okay, if you are receiving remuneration from the public exchequer. So that will be considered as a office of profit. Now, why the office of profit is the problem and why it is part of the qualification? Because of the concept called separation of power, sir. Separation of power. Now, we know there are, there are three pillars of the governance, legislature, executive and judiciary and there is a separation of power. And why separation of power is important? Because if these organs will start it, you know, uh, interfering in each other's domain, then it would be very difficult to, you know, run the, uh, uh, it would be very difficult to do the governance activities because there should be separation of power so that they can do the things which are coming under their domain. If they started doing things which are part of the other's domain, there would be chaos, the things would be chaotic, the order might not be able to ensure in the governance. That's why there is a separation of power. So when we talk about the separation of power and we talk about the office of profit, we can say if somebody is a member of parliament, if somebody is a member of parliament. Now, if somebody is a member of parliament, it means that person is a member of the legislature. Sir. That person is a member of legislature. Now, if the same member of parliament is becoming 
or the government is appointing that person as a head of some uh, head of some for example some uh, any executive body executive body for example cbfc central board for film certification now this is the body if somebody who is a member of parliament is becoming the chairman of the cbfc cbfc is a part of the executive now you are receiving remuneration as a head of the cbfc you are also receiving remuneration as a member of parliament now you are a member of parliament you are a part of the legislature you are also part of the executive sir now the separation of power doctrine is breaching sir you are also part of legislature you are also part of executive now if you are becoming chairman of some executive body in that case scenario what will happen there might be a conflict of interest and if there is a conflict of interest it means again the governance is in question mark okay you might sacrifice your integrity because you are holding both the offices at the same time so here the separation of power concepts is giving the way to the office of profit means somebody who is member of parliament or the member of legislative assembly or part of the legislature should not hold any office that is of the executive sir okay although we do have the system of the executive in the legislature we do have the system because the executive is like council of minister is the executive sir council of minister is the executive sir and council of minister is the executive and all the council of ministers are part are they are also member of parliament sir but this doesn't breach it because we have the parliamentary democracy system but on the other hand this office of profit concept is important sir. okay so this we must keep in mind that vice president of india should not hold any office of profit sir okay under the union government means you should not held the office under union government or this any state government or any local authority or any other public authority means you should not receive any kind of remuneration from the state central or any the any of the local authority okay so this the, these are the qualification criteria of the vice president of india okay sir now comes but a sitting president or vice president of the union the governor of any state and a minister of the union or any state is not deemed to hold any office of profit hence qualified for being a candidate for the vice president now here we must understand if somebody if somebody but a sitting president if somebody is a sitting president or a vice president who is vice president themselves vice president hai sir khud the governor of any state ya fir wo kya hai sir governor hai kisi state ka and a minister for the union union minister or any state is not deemed to hold any office of profit and hence qualified means somebody who is president who is a vice president or who is a governor or a minister all these people or the minister in any state government is not deemed to hold any office of profit those offices or the those positions will not be considered as office of profit means somebody who is president of india or somebody who is vice president of india will not be considered as a office of profit if that person want to contest the vice presidential election again sir okay somebody who is a, um, a central minister in the central council of minister okay uh, or for example home minister of india wants to become the vice president of india then this position will not be considered as office of profit if they want to become want to contest the election so these are some specific provisions we must keep in mind okay these things might be asked in the prelims okay then comes the mps mlas are eligible for contesting the election of vice president all the mps and mlas are also eligible to contest but if such a person is elected as vice president but if you are contesting and you are winning the election in that case scenario then he is deemed to have vacated his seat in that house means if you are a member of parliament and you are winning the election of the vice president then automatically your membership in that particular house will be suspended means now you have become the vice president of the country sir okay so that will be automatically happen ye automatically ho jayega sir okay no separate resignation is required you don't need to give the separate resignation to the concerned authority okay next is further the nomination of candidate for the election of vice president nomination means definitely you have to 
you know nominate you give your nomination that yes i want to contest the election so like somebody or the ordinary man who is sitting in their homes okay and they are they do not have any political backing and they are thinking that they will fight or they will contest the election of the vice president that might be a distant dream why because there is a condition there is a condition that the nomination whenever the person who want to contest the election is filing the nomination must be proposed by 20 electors must be proposed by 20 elector means must be proposed by 20 elector means the vice presidential candidate when file the nomination with that nomination there would be it should be proposed by 20 electors 20 electors means those people who are going to vote who are going to vote means the electoral collage the electoral collage of the vice president of india will comprises of some people we'll learn about it okay that electoral collage is nothing but the all the member of parliaments both rajya sabha and the lok sabha sir because these people are going to vote in the president, vice presidential election that is electoral collage it means the member of lok sabha or rajya sabha both are mps so 20 electors means 20 member of parliaments must give their hand with you yes means those people should be agreed with your candidature yes we are supporting this particular person so the 20 member of parliament as a elector and along with that 20 more electors again as a second as a second aid. second it means 2028 20, means you need the support of the 40 member of parliaments in order to file your candidature sir, for the vice presidential election got it sir so this is the condition that's why it is not you know it might consider as a distant dream for the common man because the common man cannot go and just file the nomination because he might not get the support of the 40 member of parliaments okay hence there is a some kind of political element is there because political parties are there so those parties who have the member of parliaments in both houses they will definitely think of it that yes we want our candidate or we want somebody who is in sync with our idea they will propose somebody okay sir to take some of the you know the cooperative benefit in the Rajya Sabha okay sir here comes the election process now how the vice president of India is elected sir it is very simple process sir first let us understand what is the electoral college the vice president like the president is elected not directly not directly now we know there are two kind of election the direct and the indirect now direct election means people of india directly are going to vote okay for example the lok sabha election in the lok sabha election there are 545 seats sir. on these 545 seats we in our lok sabha constituency go and directly vote for the candidate we want okay means all the people or the citizens of country are going to vote so in the direct election the citizen of the country directly vote for the candidate that is called direct election and another is the indirect election indirect election means we do not vote or the citizen of the country do not vote citizen of the country do vote in the first instance and they elect some people now these people who are already elected by the common men are going to vote in that particular election that is called indirect election okay so president of india is also indirectly elected and the non uh, the vice president of india is also indirectly elected both are indirectly elected sir okay so lok sabha election happens with direct election your vidhan sabha election happened directly okay but the president and the vice president election happened indirectly means the common man doesn't vote their electoral collage is different okay sir so first thing is there is a not direct election means indirect election by the people but the method of indirect election he is elected by the members of an electoral college now what is electoral college means people who are eligible to vote consisting of the members of both house of parliament okay sir so the rajya sabha members and the lok sabha members total member of parliaments are eligible to vote are eligible to vote and they are going to vote in the vice presidential election sir thus this electoral college is different from the electoral college for the election of the president sir. We'll discuss about the electoral college of the president in the president chapter. But here, let us have a glimpse. When we talk about the election of the president of India, in the election of president of India, the electoral college comprises of the both Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha MPs. 
plus all the members of the state legislative assembly sir means the state legislative assembly members are also vote and all these people are must be elected means the nominated people are not allowed to vote in the presidential election but here the electoral college is different in the vice presidential election the state legislative assembly people are not allowed to vote sir they do not vote here only parliament or the member of parliaments are going to vote sir i hope you got it so here comes the electoral college is different from that of the president of india sir so there are two in two respects two respects means what are differences first is the it consists of both elected and nominated member of the parliament so in the president of india both rajya sabha and the lok sabha members are voting sir. but these were only elected nominated were not allowed so 12 people who are nominated in rajya sabha are not allowed to vote in the presidential election but here both elected and the nominated members of the parliament are allowed to vote means the 12 people which are nominated by the rajya sabha by the president in the rajya sabha are allowed to vote in the vice presidential election sir first thing second thing is does not include the member of the state legislative assembly it does not include the mlas okay sir so in two ways the electoral college is different sir okay now what is next sir but the manner of election is the same means the presidential election and the vice presidential election the manner is the same okay that is indirect method and in the indirect method the method which is followed for the president is also followed for the vice president and that is the proportional representation by means of the single transferable vote sir the proportional representation single transferable voting system sir this is this particular manner or this particular system is followed in both president as well as vice president sir and that is in the secret ballot means you are you are not supposed to show your vote to the everybody that is in the secret ballot sir so the proportional representation and single transferable voting system is used sir now we will discuss about this particular system what is the proportional representation and single transferable voting system in detail in our further lecture in in president we will learn about it but here let us take a little glimpse about what is proportional representation and single transferable voting system let me tell you a very simple example proportional representation is a system proportional representation is a system that votes are go to the candidate in the proportion okay now for example if you first uh, if you want to if there are two candidates if there are two candidates and the number of post is one these two candidates are fighting for the election sir they are contesting for the presidential vice presidential election sir for example there are three there are four there are four candidates make it a little bit more easy and elaborate there are four candidates who want to become the vice president of the country and all these fours are you know aiming this particular post now under the proportional representation what we do under the proportional representation first let us understand another system that is called first past the post first past the post system which is used in the lok sabha election what is first past the post first past the post means the candidate who is going to get the highest number of vote will be declared as a winning candidate okay means if 100 votes are there okay and somebody got 30 somebody got 29 somebody got 18 somebody got 10 somebody like this so 30 is the highest mark so whoever got the highest vote will be considered as a winning candidate sir this is a easy system this is a very easy system first past the post okay so somebody who got 29 will not be considered as a winner okay means 29 lane pe bhi haar jaoge sir 30 lane pe jitoge to usse thoda sa aage hai but wo jeet gaya okay that is called first past the post system here comes the proportional representation which is different from the first past the post here what we have we have a quota we have a quota sir first we must first we must you know derive a quota and that quota need to be cleared in order to become victorious okay sir 
and that quota will be you know uh, we will able to find out first what we do in order to get the quota we have to uh, uh, we have to first take into numerator total number of votes total number of votes and that will be divided by the total number of candidates plus one sir okay so if there are 100 number of votes 100 number of votes they will be divided by the number of candidates there are four candidates plus one there are four candidates plus, oh sorry sorry not candidates the number of post plus one number of post plus one sir so number of post plus one plus one plus one this is the formula so here we can see that if number of votes are 100 divided by the number of posts number of posts there is only one number of posts so one plus one and here plus one it means 100 divided by two plus one it means 50 one sir so the candidates who will cross this threshold 51 51 is your quota sir will become the winning candidate sir now how will we get to know that somebody is getting 51 now this is very difficult so here comes a system called the list so all the people like 100 people who are going to vote 100 people are there who are going to vote everybody is provided with a list in this list all the four names are written a b c d sir and now all the 100 people will give their preference to the individuals for example somebody said that yes this is my first preference c is my second preference a is my third preference and d is my fourth preference each and every candidate will do the same and they will put this particular ballot paper in a ballot box now while calculating what they will do they will make the four different boxes four different boxes the a b c and d now they will take out one by one the ballot paper and they will check the first preference now they are taking out the first ballot paper and they will see the first preference is b so they will put that particular in the box of b okay so this is one similarly they will do it for each and every ballot paper till the 100 ballot paper goes so here we check like 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 this is also getting this is also getting this is also getting. So after the first calculation, after the first calculation, if somebody out of these four is going to cross the quota of the 51, for example, in the first go, the B is crossing the 51 mark. If B is crossing the 51 mark, then B will get elected because we have only one post set. B will get elected. Okay. And in case if B is not clearing or nobody is clearing, for example, a is also getting something, B is also getting something, C is also getting and D is also getting and nobody is getting, getting the or crossing the mark of the 51 which is the quota. In that case scenario what we will do? In that case scenario we will eliminate the least means somebody who got the least votes we are going to eliminate it and we will collect all the ballot papers which the D got. Now we will check what is the second preference in that and according to second preference we will again redistribute it. After redistribution, again we will check if somebody is crossing 51. If somebody will cross 51, that person will get elected. But in case still somebody is not clearing it, again we will eliminate the least one, then we will redistribute it and somebody will definitely cross it. Sir. This is called the proportional representation in the single transferable voting system, sir. I hope you understand it. We are going to understand this system in detail in our president lecture, sir. Okay. So we will make a separate video on it. And you can also ask your queries in the comment section if you find any. Okay, sir. So, this is the system, the proportional representation and the single transferable voting, sir. Okay. So, what is next? The term of office, sir. Now, once the candidate got elected, after that, that candidate will hold the office for the five years. So, term is the five years, sir. Okay. Now, however, he can resign from his office at any time. So, resignation option is available. If the vice president is not satisfied with that with their job, they can resign. Okay. And they can resign resignation letter to the president, sir. The vice president can hold office beyond his term of five years until his successor assumes. So, if the five-year term is completed and the vice presidential election did not happen till now, 
ओके इन दैट के सीनेर वट विल है वाइस प्रेसिडेंट विल नॉट रिजाइन और लीव द ऑफिस ही विल कंटिन्यू टू होल्ड द ऑफिस ओके टिल द टाइम द न्यू वाइस प्रेसिडेंट कम्स इन ऑफिस ओके सो इफ इन केस सीनेरियो इफ इन एनी एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी केस सीनेरियो इफ द इलेक्शन आर नॉट यू नो और द इलेक्शन कमीशन और द कम्पिटेंट अथॉरिटी इज नॉट एबल टू कंडक्ट द इलेक्शन इन दैट केस सीनेरियो द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट विल होल्ड द ऑफिस इवन बियॉन्ड द फाइव ईयर्स इंटिल द टाइम द न्यू वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंटर्स द पर्सन रिमेन इन द ऑफिस दिस इज वॉट यू नीड टू कीप इन माइंड ओके here the vice president can hold office beyond his term until his successor assume he is also eligible for the re election now once you have completed the tenure of 5 year you are re, you are eligible you are re, re election you are eligible for the re election you can again contest for the election he may be elected for any number of terms any number of terms means you can become the vice president of india any number of times okay there is no constitutional bar on it okay here let us discuss one important thing the united states of america recently i think yesterday the election results declared in the united states of america and the republican won the election and the donald trump is again going to take oath in the february okay he is the president elect so here we understand we should, we need to understand the united states of american system in which the somebody can become the president of united states of america only twice means for the 8 years only you cannot become the president you cannot hold the office of president beyond 8 years okay means only two terms are possible for a single person you cannot have the third term so there is a constitutional bar in the united states but in india for the vice president there is no such bar okay vacancy in the office means the office can be empty on the expiry of tenure if 5 years are expiring the vacancy can occur second by his resignation if the vice president is give a res resignation to the president vacancy might occur on his removal the vice president is removed now the removal we are going to understand that how the vice president can be removed sir there is a procedure of the removal we have the impeachment process of the president of india similarly we have the removal process for the vice president of india we'll discuss about it it's very easy procedure okay presidential impeachment is a difficult procedure and hard to attain but the removal of the vice president is a relatively easy process by his death in any case any casualty or death happens there might occur a vacancy sir okay fifth when he become disqualified to hold office in any case scenario there is a possibility that by the forgery or by you know any misleading the competent authorities if somebody is uh, becoming part of the system and becoming the um, candidate of the vice presidential election and become you know winning candidate in that case scenario the competent authority or a proper procedure can be followed and uh, the person can be disqualified in that case scenario also the vacancy might occur sir okay <clears throat> here comes when the vacancy is going to cause by the expiration okay this we already discussed i think when the vacancy is going to cause by the expiration of term sitting vice president and election to fill the vacancy must be held before the expiration means what is the usual thing usual thing is if today the vice president is going to hold office and this is the five year tenure which is going to complete it so the competent authority which is the election commission of india must hold the election before the expiry of term like for last two months are there then they must two months is just an example so in last two months they can conduct the vice presidential election so that the outgoing vice president will be you know will welcome the new vice president there is a possibility okay now here comes if the office fall vacant on the resignation removal death or otherwise so in these case scenario if if the vacancy is happening then election to fill the vacancy should be held as soon as possible after the occurrence of the vacancy if the resignation is happening if the removal is happening if death or otherwise is happening in that case scenario as soon as possible means there is no time period provided by the constitution that in how much time period the election must be held what they are saying as soon as possible but in case of president there is a 6 months time period is provided to the competent authority that within the 6 months election must be held sir okay here comes the newly elected vice president remain in office for the full term of 5 year so in case if the vice president who is elected today within the span of 2 years the death occur or something like that occur vacancy occurred new vice president election will happen and the new vice president will remain in office for the whole 5 years sir not to not in the remaining period for the whole 
five years. Here comes the note. While acting as a president or discharging the function of president, we know that there are so many cases in which the vice president act as a president, sir. In that case scenario, the vice president does not perform the duties of the office of chairman of the Rajya Sabha. Vice president does act as a chairman of the Rajya Sabha, sir. But in case if the president is not present, the vice president act as a president in full capacity. In that case scenario, the vice president will not act as a chairman of the Rajya Sabha. This we must keep in mind. Okay. In that case scenario, the Rajya Sabha will be chaired by the deputy chairperson of the Rajya Sabha, sir. Okay. That during this period, those duties are performed by the deputy chairman of the Rajya Sabha, sir.